guys. Didn't get around to the video quite as early as I wanted to. Um, I'm just going to have to kind of jump right into it today because I have to be at work at 5 and it's already after 3.30, so. Uh, we're starting a little bit of a new mini-series in amongst the first pin, or the first pin series on animal starts, or homestead animal starts. This one... This is the first day on how to make your own animal feeds or how to grow your what to grow for your animals. So I'm just going to jump right in here because like I said I don't have a lot of time and I need to make sure I can get to work on time so but I want to make sure I can get a video out. We still have to get the other one spliced together and uploaded but it'll come. It'll get out there. All right, so how to make your own animal feeds. Once you've had chickens for a while, you may want to experiment with making your own animal feeds. Making your own may not necessarily be cheaper, but you can use local and highly nutritious ingredients. Most conventional animal feeds rely heavily on corn and soybeans as the main ingredients, and those are not healthy, especially the way they are grown. They're just not healthy for your animals. Unless you are paying for a high-priced feed that is tested as being GMO-free, your chickens are most likely eating genetically modified ingredients, and none of that is healthy. You do not want to feed your livestock GMO feed. Some people have no issues with GMO corn and soybeans, but others would prefer to use heritage varieties. That was one of the reasons why I liked the uh, Kalmbach variety, which, again, is spelled K A L M. B A C H. Because AI does not know how to spell. Luckily, making your own animal feed is not super difficult. Sorry, I keep getting ads. I'm trying to get rid of them. Okay. Last winter, I came across a GMO free feed recipe and I was super excited. I had already switched. The goats off their prepackaged feed, but was hesitant about phasing out the layer feed. I ended up switching all the animals to a feed mix, and I'm very happy with the results. And again, as I said before, we are going to be growing pretty much 100% of our animals' feed, with the exception of when we're first starting out and we first start getting our animals, because I'm going to start stocking up. <clears throat> excuse me, on some good feeds first, and I'm going to make sure that they're healthy and they're non-GMO and all that stuff, so. But I just, I want to make sure that I have that starter so I have something to feed them when we first get our animals. Because, obviously, it's going to take a minute to be able to get all of the feed grown. All right, our chickens are having the easiest molt ever. The goats are sleek and shiny, and the rabbits are looking good as well. I did make some personal tweaks to the recipe. So the nutritional content is not exactly what is posted on the link. If you are interested in mix mixing your own feed at all, check it out. Since I've done more research and made some modifications to our feed to really optimize it. Okay, make your own animal feeds. The mix I started out with is one part split peas or lentils, or, and you can use both, and they're very healthy for chickens, one part flax seed or sunflower seeds, one part barley, and one part oats. I buy these in bulk from Winco or the feed store, wherever I happen to be shopping when it's time to bulk up. Since switching, I realized that the chickens will pick through the mix to find their favorite items. Invariably, the le this leaves behind a lot of split peas and lentils. If you want to keep using the split peas, grind the mix, add water, and feed daily as a mash. Not a bad idea. I'll have to remember that. But remember, all of these pans, I'm going to be writing these out. So I'm going to have this information in my binder. So... If you are using lentils, sprouting them actually motivates the chickens to gobble them up. 
Sprouting is super easy. Simply soak the seeds overnight and then rinse daily until fed. I'm going to remember that. If you have the space, you can even green it up for fodder. You could also mix the ingredients together with molasses, which is especially good for goats. Recently, I've switched to using sunflower seeds as the main protein source, in, a, in addition to alfalfa, if you can find a GMO-free source, for the rabbits and goats. The barley can be swapped for wheat berries or cracked corn in the winter. The goats can eat whole oats, but the rabbits and chickens will absorb nutrients better if they are rolled or sprouted first. Recently, I've been adding flax meal and a handful of salt to the mix for extra nutrition. Make sure the salt is not white table salt. Because that is terrible for you. For It's terrible for people and animals. Easy to find ingredients. Number one, lentils. Number two, split peas. Number three, black oil sunflower seeds. Number four, barley. Number five, oats. Number six, wheat berries. Number seven, cracked corn. Number eight, flax seeds or meal. Number eight, salt. Make sure it's not white table salt. It needs to be a good mineral salt. The best thing to do is to go to the actual website, offgridwithdougandstacy.com. And click on their link at the bottom of their page for the Redmond's Real Salt. Redmond's actually has the, they have like a salt, they have a salt that you can actually feed to your animals. And for like your bigger livestock, they actually have a salt lick that you can feed your animals. Sorry, I hit the wrong button on my phone, so... Say so now it's going to go back and I have to go back and find my spot. Okay. And number nine, last but not least, pumpkin seeds. Supplements. You will need to add supplements in separate dishes to make sure there are no nutrient deficiencies. The goats and rabbits will need minerals and the goats will need baking soda. Make sure it is a good baking soda. Bob's Red Mill, Bob's Red Mill's baking soda is a very good one. And you can get that on Amazon. You can get like a box, uh, you can get like a six pack box on Amazon. It's like about 40 bucks. Wait, no, it's not. It might be about 30. I don't remember. I have it saved. It's a little pricey, but it's worth it. It really is. It's worth it. The, okay, the chickens need oyster shell for additional calcium. And I think there's something else you can do for that too, but I don't remember. And we'll, I'll find that out as we get into this more. I just don't remember. Ground kelp is a good source of copper and other nutrients, and my chickens and goats come running every time I refill their kelp bowl. Because uh, goats need copper as well. Okay, and you can find an example of putting together a homemade mix on the video of Justin Rhodes from Abundant Permaculture. And I am subscribed to his channel as well, and he's 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 really good. He's uh, obviously another homesteader and tries to make everything from scratch for his family and animals and the whole nine yards, so... I hate trying to get rid of an ad and it won't go away. Okay. Fresh foods. It's also very important that your animals get fresh live foods daily as well as high protein ones. The best option is pasture or forage. You can even pasture your chickens on your lawn. If that isn't a possibility, you can still grow foods and bring them to your animals. Extra garden produce such as beets, chard, squash, or cooked potatoes. If you're going to give them potatoes, you always have to make sure they're cooked. Doesn't matter what animal it is, you have got you have to make sure those potatoes are cooked because they are toxic unless they're cooked. So 
Sorry, not trying to show off my big boobs. Tom-free and even weeds like nettles and dandelions are highly nutritious and delicious to our furry and feathered friends. Weeds, nettle, dandelions, that stuff is so medicinal and so healthy for animals and humans alike. If you plant cover crops, you can cut them for feed or let the animals come to the garden plot in a tractor or temporary fencing. Some good options are kale, turnips, radishes, buckwheat, and clover. Some grains can even be grown in small spaces such as dent corn, broom corn, or amaranth. Amaranth, I, actually, I have seeds for that, and I'm actually planning on getting quite a bit more seeds of that. I'm, is, on top of that, I'm also planning on getting amar amaranth grain from Amazon because I want the healthier grains that have like when we do use them because we're getting away from eating a lot of grain like just straight up and we all have to especially scott my husband because i'm pretty sure that he might have a gluten allergy and that he's had it for a long time because he has a really bad eczema and psoriasis rash and he's tried everything. Like, he has had every prescription out there. He's been to the doctor, I don't know how many times. He's had everything. And some things have started to work, and then they quit. And I think he's only, there was only one time when he was able to get rid of it once. But it started back up, and we've nailed everything down pretty much to that gluten from the grains because he's always been a gr a big bread eater, a big grain eater. So we're trying to get him away from eating a lot of the grain foods to see if it helps. We'll get him we'll get him over it. Sorry, I lost my place. Leftover fruits or ground nuts make good chicken and duck feed, and worms, slugs, Japanese beetles, kefir, or leftover dairy are great for added protein. And I'm going to keep that in mind, especially for once we have our own dairy cow, and, you know, we have our ducks and our geese and our guineas and chickens and all our animals. So, chickens are also happy to eat extra eggs, hard-boiled and even... Awful. O F F A L. I'm gonna have to look that one up because I don't even know what that is. And blood left over from butchering your rabbits. Gross. Okay. Our rabbits are gonna be for business only. That is gonna be Chloe, one of Chloe's businesses she's going to be doing on our homestead is selling. She's gonna be in charge of taking care of the rabbits and selling them and that's going to be her money the other thing that she's going to be doing is she's going to try her hand at wood burning she is she's going to make the sign for our farm faith first farm and homestead and she's going to start making little things out of different uh with different pieces of wood and selling them so that's going to be her end. Okay, anyway. So there's not going to be the butchering the rabbits on our property. We will have meat chickens and we will have quail. I'm probably going to have to get myself used to that unless I can couple with maybe the other couple that lives just down the road from us or Andrew. One of the two or both. The book, The Small Scale Poultry Flock, dedicates a great portion of its chapters to discussing replacing purchased feeds. If you want to get away from buying both pre-made feeds and purchased grains, I highly recommend it. Want even more information? 
If you want to learn about animal nutrition, National Academies Press offers a free download of the nutrient requirements of poultry. It's very technical, but very informative. I have it downloaded to my phone's Kindle app so I can read it when I'm out and about if I'm so inclined. I would highly suggest looking up the book and buying the hardcover book because you might not always be able to get onto your phone to use it. Highly recommend buying the book. It's worth the extra money. Okay. The other book they recommend is Domestic Rabbits and Their Histories by Bob Whitman. And that has some great detail on alternative feeding of rabbits. The Stories Guide to Raising Dairy Goats has an entire chapter dedicated to goat nutrition and formulating your own feed mix. Langston University has a, cal a calculator for balancing the, the nutritional profile of your goat feed. You can also check out the recommended books on the resource page. Okay, that's... And that page would be from farmingmybackyard.com. Go make your own feeds. I love being a little more independent and able to mix my own feeds and make sure my animals get the highest quality feed without having to buy expensive and hard to find feeds. It can be tricky keeping the the nutrients in balance, but I find it worthwhile. Do you mix your own feeds or do you prefer the ease of prepackaged? Please be careful. Your animals do not need pre made, GMO treated foods. They're so bad for them, they're so bad for their health. It, it's just not worth it. it it's not. It is so worth putting the extra work into getting the necessary ingredients to make your own and growing the other vegetables and foods that they need. Excuse me. Okay, so that, that was it for that one. So if there's anybody out there that does make their own uh, feed for their animals, let me know. Let me know in the comments, and any ideas, let me know. It'd be, it'd be nice to, you know, see what uh, everyone else does. So, it's not a very long video, and but I don't have a long time, so it'll give me enough time to get it on here and get it out. Um... When we come to the end of this particular little series on how to grow your own animal feed for your livestock, I am going to, at the end of that video, I'm going to make sure I have time to do it. Hopefully it'll be Saturday. I'm hoping. Let me look. Because today's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. What else do we have? We have, I think those two are pretty much the same. I might do a couple tomorrow. Maybe what I'll do is do a couple tomorrow and a couple Friday. I don't know, those two are pretty much the same, so I might just incorporate those two together. I have to work 4 to 7 tomorrow. And then my schedule is stupid Friday. My schedule is 2.45 to 7.15 Friday. I'm going... I'll probably incorporate these two that are pretty much the same. Probably tomorrow. I might just get I might just get up earlier tomorrow because my husband Scott he has to be at work at eight o'clock in the morning, so. Uh, anyway, but Saturday, what I want to do? Two, three, Thursday, Friday. No, that'll work. Okay, Saturday we'll finish out the how to grow your own animal feed. 
And before I end the video, I'm going to show my posters that I put together for that. Because it's separate than our the poster I have on the wall. And what I did is I incorporated out of these pins, I drew up garden spots that I am going to grow feed for all of our livestock. All of them. Because I don't want to have to depend on the stores for food. For even the animals. If you're going to be self-sufficient, especially when we get in a situation where we can't go to the store and buy this stuff, you have to be able to grow it. You have to be able to feed your animals. Do your research. Go back and do your research and even like the 1800s history and read up and find out how they fed their animals. It was a lot of different things that they grew on their own. They didn't go and buy expensive feed every week. They couldn't afford that. I mean, a lot of the farmers and homesteaders back then, they couldn't, they had to make deals to even afford seed for their fields. So, just do some research, and Saturday, uh, we're, we'll be getting into that more, because Saturday is going to be the last one on uh, growing your own animal feed. I do believe the one that I'm going to be doing Saturday is how to feed animals without commercial food. And then I'm going to end that little mini-series with my posters, to show you guys exactly what I've put together, and what we're hoping to be able to do. And I just have to figure out, you know, where to put those plots or garden beds or whatever. And with that, I mean, it does it's not really going to matter if there's a bunch of weeds in with it. Because a lot of those they'll eat. So, alright, but I'm going to get off from here and get this video uploaded before it gets too long and I don't have time. Uh, I will, hopefully we'll get that other video out here soon. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.